Blessings, everybody. This is the one and only Mr. L.P. Stephen Sykes uh, with Live and Global Media. And we have world-renowned Grammy-nominated and recording and winning artist, Mr. Raheem Devon. How are you doing today, sir? Bless, man. Bless and favor. Uh, this is your sixth album. You're coming out on uh, October 19th, Decade of a Love King. How does it feel to be at, you know, the sixth album? Not many people make it this far. Man, album number six, you know, it's um I think it speaks to my staying power. Definitely like you right you're absolutely right. Not not many people make it this far, you know, and I feel like I got so far to go. I think preparation has got me this far. Um, you know, being consistent has got me here and that's and that's the main focus and the goal. Um, as we grow and change in this industry, there are so many things that we, you know, go through the different processes and life lessons. What is the some of the skills and things that you had to change within your process with this album versus the first couple of albums that you went through? Um, the, the process is always the same. You know what I'm saying? Like it don't it don't never change. Like you know, um, I don't I'm a I i do not write things down, so I'm like a freestyle writer, I guess you could say. It's kinda of like, you know, my process is like Lil Wayne or um uh, Jay Z or you know, more like a rapper's process that is just you know, gifted in the sense of where they just take what's going on that day and just make it happen, you know what I'm saying? So um Amen. that's the process. I mean it's not it's not too many like rules. I don't I don't need like, you know, stripper pole or, you know, some type of narcotic or something like that to be creative, you know what I mean? Like um, music is in me, you know what I mean. It flows through me, and I've experienced enough in life um, that I that I feel like it's so much to talk about um, and witness so much that I feel like it's enough to talk about that you know I could change people and change their life and and and, and, and bring them either closer together or, or say something that's thought provoking to make them you know think about their thought process or, or, or see things differently through my lens and my scope. Amen. What has changed um, for you in terms of what? Like, what did you learn now? Being you know you've been in this for as your album said, decade of a love king. What's different for you in terms of expressing love versus would you say maybe seven or eight years ago? Um, I mean, I've grown as a man. Like you know, I, you know, mm-hmm. when 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 I first, I mean, when I first my first album came out, I had. You know, I had, you know, one son, one kid's mom. I mean, fast forward, I got four kids, four kids' moms. You bump your head, you learn different things, different processes. Um, You know, I was a guy that at one point in my life never wanted to be married. I was a guy that um, buried himself in his music and his art and his work. You know, now I'm the guy that understands the importance of family and, and um. And, and what it means to really be a man, and and you know, and and, and to chase normalcy, and want want to have a life, and you know what I mean, but want but want to keep it, keep keep you have a functioning, great relationship, and you know, understanding what monogamy is, and these different things, you know what I mean, so that when I do, when I do ask a woman to marry me, I I'll, I'll know that I can handle it and and be prepared, and you know, hopefully, you know. My my kids can say, man, you know, dad was a was a was a was a lover or and a and a and a pretty wild guy coming up. But you know, what I'm saying, I saw him, you know, have a wife for 30 years or 20 years or, you know, whatever I'm blessed with, right? So, um, yeah. it's really just the coming of the age and coming of the dawn of becoming a man. I thought I was a man all this time, and I realized, man, even in the last like year, like I've had so many. Profound. The last two years, like God has like rocked my world and rocked my life so so profoundly that you know between my music and just the things that I've experienced in life, you can't tell me that God don't exist. You can't tell me that I'm not here for a reason. You can't tell me that um, I won't have staying power. You can't tell me that you know my music ain't out here touching people and you know my community work is in vain. So. Um, you know, I know this is, we talk about music and the album and everything, but um, you know, the reality is my music is gonna always be here. I put it, I put enough music out so far that into the world that if I never made another album, my music would always be here. And I think it's safe to say it would, it would be played. But um, the reality is, I won't always be here, or like my loved ones won't always be here. So I, I more value those things, and and I'm thankful for 
my gift that I have allowing me to be able to see that. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, amen. The legacy because, uh, is always important. Yeah, because as a public figure, man, you know, people just cater to us, and a lot of times people don't always tell us what we need to hear and what's best for us, you know? So, um, so I'm thankful for that, you know? I'm thankful for the it's whole very- process of yeah, that I, of things that I, I've experienced over the last 13 years, you know, on and off stage. Amen on that one. It's always good to surround yourself with people that's going to tell you uh, what you need, not exactly what you want to hear. Mm-hmm. Um, and now you being a businessman through all of this in these years, over the years, you started your own record label and you have other people, uh, several artists working with the DMG 368 uh, music group. Tell us about that and, you know, the next step. You have uh, several new companies, uh, Shaz, uh, Rock um, and several others. Yeah, um, a lot of great music, man, coming out over the next decade, you know, artists, and I'm involved in their careers, and, you know, give us that assist, and now they're flying, you know, they flying the nest and off doing their things, you know, Phil Day, Chaz French, um, working with an artist named Macy, Yazara, um, Brenique, Brendalyn McKinney, uh, Wes Felton, one half of the Crossroads, uh, uh, B Boy Soul, um, who is like, you know, one of the future Robert Glaspers of the world. Um, so, you know, just constantly working, and I enjoy um, investing time and also money into the next big thing, you know what I'm saying? And, I think that that um you know in order to preserve be be part of the culture you have to preserve the culture it's not it's not limited to just um just putting out my own music but you know um putting out other people's music as well um mm-hmm. and, and and you know and supporting um putting putting some people on a lot of great people are trying to work hard to make sure they maintain this business uh besides one aspect um their lives where they're being seen. You're breaking up a little bit. Oh, excuse me. Uh, I was saying that some people are working very hard to have several other businesses in order to maintain a lifestyle or to grow. And you have, uh, besides this, you have the Love Life Foundation uh, for yourself. And that uh, takes on several initiatives, including domestic violence. Could you tell us what brought about this uh, direction versus the other directions that you could go? Yeah, I just, you know, I enjoy helping people. I've always been a people person, always been in a, uh, a job that allowed me to communicate with people and, and stuff of that nature, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I for, you know, I've been given, I've been blessed up throughout my career. I go from city to city and, you know, make decent money and create these memories and everything. But, um, you know, it, doing my community work allows me to be able to support the people that support me, that's all. And support the communities that support me. So, you know, um, lending that extra hand, whether it's, you know, helping to clothe or feed people that are displaced or advocating to fight domestic violence, bring more awareness to that with the youth, you know. This is the month for domestic violence awareness, by the way. But, um, yes. you know, just or, or if you're talking about arts and education and um, that type of thing, um, you know, again, giving back, it, 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 it costs nothing to be a public figure. It costs nothing to care about people. So, you know, the messaging that we try to give to the youth or to people out there, you don't have to be Raheem Devon to care about your community and care about people, you know, get involved. Mm-hmm. And, and you're from the native uh, DMV area, and you see the level of gentrification, the level of growth, all these different buildings mm-hmm. growing. How does it uh, feel when you come through D.C. visiting family and friends and conducting business and see such massive growth? Uh, well, how, how does that make you feel? I mean, I'm a world tra- I'm a world traveler, so mm-hmm. there's a yin and a yang there to, to gentrification and stuff of that nature, or like things changing. Like that's the natural progression of life. Things got to change, you know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. um, but, um, you know, far too many times, you know, we sit on the sidelines as people of black and brown color and complain about the gentrification or whatever, but, you know, what about educating ourselves or going harder to be able to make them dollars to be able to buy that property to live where we, we – why, why should we want to live good? You know what I mean? Like I, I, like, I don't think anybody should have to live in poverty or live in the projects or be on food stamps or whatever. 
But some of these things, some of these conditions are controllable, and we have to it's just taking our own initiative, you know what I'm saying? But to, as long as we continue to eat out of the palm of, you know, uh, a quote-unquote slave master's hand, or, you know, I'm not waiting for nobody to come and save me. That's what, the, that's what, that's what partially what the, what the Love Life Foundation is about. I'm not waiting for nobody to come magically come and save my people or help or assist or do whatever. Like, I'm going to go out there and do the work, mob up, find some like-minded individuals. We're going to figure it out. You know Amen I mean? on that one. Can we help? Can we can we help everybody? No. Do some people even want to be helped? No. But the people that do and want to apply themselves or need that extra push or need that assist, like we with it. And that's what that's what you know, that's what it's about. Now you know, being a world traveler, it's not just going on in D.C. It's happening everywhere. South Africa has been like that. It's been structured like that. You know what I'm saying? You might some might argue that they were the the, the blueprint for gentrification, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> gentrification is very similar to segregation, you know what I'm saying? So, like, uh, you know what I mean? It's been there since so, the beginning um, of time. Yeah, you know what I mean? I think so So many times we make it a black and white thing that we forget it's not a black and white thing. It's not even a Native American or Asian or Latino thing. It's a social class thing. It's a have and have not thing, you know what I mean? Mm, and, you know, you it's, a, it's a... Yeah, so you know what I mean. It's, you know, the one percent or the or the have or the have not. You know what I mean. Well, so, well, we're gonna we have to change our mentality in order to grow in this world. The one one a couple of last quick questions. You being a family man, and um, obviously we're fighting a fight in this world, and also keeping our prayer hands up regarding how our children are being taught into today's world when we're so much in chaos as adults that we're forgetting. Uh, how about what we're leaving left for our children? As a family man, what type of image um, and life lessons you're trying to share with your children today in order to help them survive? Um, my biggest fear for the new millennial child is that they're just not prepared for life, you know what I mean? Um, you know, some of these kids are too sheltered and just not prepared for life, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, and, 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 and it's a cold world out there. You know what I mean? So um, my biggest thing is just one that makes sure that they prepare for life. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's male or female, you got to prepare for life, man. Like, you know, yeah. um, it's, it's a cold, cold world out there. You know, you got to start <laughs> paying bills and, and figuring it out. And You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you know, everybody's circumstance is different, you know? So I think I that, um, yeah, it's, it's a different climate now. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot now it's a lot of it's a lot more distractions too. They got a lot more distractions, you know. But I thought I think a force and allow them to feel like they have to grow up quicker, you know. And um, mm. so for the for the youngers out there, I would definitely say just enjoy being a kid, you know. Um, don't spend so much time on the video games because, you know, that ain't gonna prepare you. That ain't gonna prepare you for life, you know. Mm-hmm. Amen. We didn't get a chance to stay on our uh, Nintendo 64 and GameCubes and everything as long as we wanted. <laughs> yeah, it is recreation, you know what I'm saying? You know, but every mm-hmm. way you turn, it's a distraction for them now. So, you know, and um, can't feel, so I don't want to say I feel sorry for them, but you got to stay prayed up for them and keep them busy and keep them attentive, you know? Mm, understand. The last question I want to say is that, you know, in your videos and things, you're showing a good, uh, healthy man and workout. What's your workout routine daily just to keep you going <laughs> for these videos and, um, you know, be able to stay I, on I, the road healthy? I, I definitely watch my diet, man, in terms of, like, I don't, I'm not a eat, I, I don't eat meat or anything of that nature, but um, day-to-day workout, like, that's, that's, I'll be fully honest, that's a challenge for me. Like, I'm, I mean, I want, by the time I'm 50, I want to look like Lenny Kravitz, though, so I got some work to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you got a few years left to go, and hopefully we can keep you going yeah. until you're 60, 70, God knows, or whatever the good man upstairs has yeah. for you. Hopefully we can keep you yeah. going. Yeah, I you want know, that Mr. Ryan? Man. I, want, I want to get as long as I can, you know. Hey, okay, you can still screw about love with the gray beard and all. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Mr. Raheem Devon, I thank you so very much. Again, you were at your sixth uh, album, A Decade of a Love King, coming out October 19th around the world, and your single right now, Don't Come Easy, is hitting up the charts. And, sir, I thank you very much for spending time with Live and Global Media, sir. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. You have a blessed day and, and safe travel, sir. You, you too. Peace and love.